What are some scary facts about the nightmares you had? Story one, they're not exact. Most dreams, according to researchers, are brought on by anxiety. Nevertheless, they are rarely a direct reflection of our worries. In a tiny study, Tufts University researchers examined dreams and nightmares following the 9-11 attacks. They postulated that all Americans experienced some degree of trauma as a result of the events, even though the images of the Twin Towers, the planes, and even tall buildings falling were repeatedly shown on TV, none of the subjects, none of whom were directly impacted by the attacks, reported a discernible increase in strong or vivid visions and nightmares. Story 2. Nobody is going to hear you scream, because when you are suffering a nightmare, you cannot move or scream. All of the rolling around and tossing you two see in the movies, Hollywood is misinformed. All of our muscles are paralyzed during dream sleep, the REM stage. Apart from the muscles used for breathing and our eyes, explains Anissa Dust, an assistant professor of internal medicine at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center who specializes in sleep medicine. Once you are sitting up and screaming, you are already aroused and coming out of dream sleep, she continues. According to her, this explains why we may recall nightmares more vividly than other kinds of dreams. When compared to non-scary dreams, which do not cause you to wake up, you wake up straight out of the nightmare, so your memory is better. Story 3. More women than males experience nightmares. Okay, perhaps. A.J. Marsden, Ph.D., an assistant professor of psychology and human services at Beacon College in Leesburg, Florida, references an English study that indicated women experience nightmares at a higher rate than men. This might be linked to the finding that women also have more issues with anxiety, and nightmares are often an expression of our worries and anxieties, she explains. Women usually report having more intense nightmares than men, focusing on fear, loss, and confusion. But report is the crucial word here. Adolescent and adult females report and talk about nightmares more than males, says Das. It's probable that males underestimate the severity of their dreams or are less inclined to disclose nightmares. According to Marsden and Das, perception might play a role in this situation. What one person perceives as a scary nightmare may only seem like a ridiculous dream to another. Story 4. Dreams serve as a preparation for the actual reality. According to Marsden, a theory that is gaining traction lately suggests that dreams are the brain's attempt to resolve issues or manage strong emotions. There are numerous theories regarding why we dream, including the ones that claim it is a reflection of our unconscious mind or that it keeps our brain active while our bodies are at rest. She goes on to state, a nightmare may be our brain's way of preparing us for a particular fearful situation, adding that having terrifying dreams about someone breaking into your home could be your mind trying to either help you feel less terrified or prepare you for coping with the issue. In a 2007 study that was published in the journal Sleep, Researchers discovered that while postpartum women had more vivid nightmares about anything happening to them, pregnant women also experienced dreams and nightmares regarding their infant. Such behaviors, according to investigators, may reflect a mother's state of maternal vigilance. They may even serve a functional role in her infant caregiving. Alternatively, they said that every new mother could identify with you the intense dreams being the consequence of acute sleep disruption. Story 5. That week where every night, around 8, Nine, my vision would go red and I'd see visceral images accompanied by strange murmuring noise for hours before waking up in bed, not sure how I got there. That one time a character went through a dark, narrow, suffocating tunnel and unleashed an entity on the dreamscape. That one dream a character woke up in the real world and pieces from his dream were becoming reality, ending with a phone call from a girl he met in the dream, but whatever was on the other end of the line was corrupted. More recently, a dream where while exiting a hospital, the doors opened up to more doors, and those doors into more doors, more doors than there should have been space to hold them. Story 6. My friend told me a story about a girl who had a lucid dream. She was sitting in a full cafe, and everyone had their own conversations going on. She realized she was lucid dreaming and said that fact out loud. Suddenly, everybody stopped talking and turned their head to her. And in unison, they said, you're not supposed to know that. Then one day, I had so many naps in a row, I think it triggered this, because I had the same dream, only that it was me sitting in the cafe instead of the girl. I was conscious and remembered my friend telling me about this scene, but I couldn't help but say it out loud. And seriously, the way their head turns and how monotone but serious they say, you're not supposed to know that, is so scary. After they said this, the dream shattered and everything turned black and suddenly, I could hear sounds in the background as if I was standing in a crowded, crowded
crowded subway station, and with each moment, the sounds got so unbearably loud as if multiple people would speak directly into my ear. At the same time, I felt my body trembling in real life, and I tried so damn hard to open my eyes. It was a really nasty feeling, and when I finally woke up, I was panting so hard and shivered. Didn't dare to take another nap then. Story 7. So this is from a few months ago. It started with a guy clothed in rain clothing, dark blue plastic full jacket and pants with reflective stripes. He was washing my window, but not really. In fact, he was inspecting my room. After that, he was done. He had just out of sight with the intent of murdering me in my sleep at night. He choked me with a metal cord. Honestly, it was so real I could feel the cord pressing my jugulars closed in intricate detail. His attempt failed because at the last moment I threw myself against a wall. Later, I was in a police office that resembled my little brother's room. The desk was placed in the opposite corner that it is normally in, and there was a policewoman. I remember her to be black and kind of chubby, and she was listening to my story. Suddenly, while telling, I started daydreaming. It was like the woman was talking about a band of faceless men. They would come at daytime, hover around you, and it would turn dark. And they would steal your face. And then it turned dark. Um, and suddenly, the policewoman, the only one I trusted there, was gone. And the faceless men were there, as I had awoken from my daydream. Then, out of shock, I woke up for real. Story 8. I love Harry Potter, so naturally I wanted to see the movies when they came out. I had plans to see the second Fantastic Beasts movie when I was pregnant with my son, but he surprised us by coming a bit early. I got to see it one week after he was born. To those who have not seen the movie and do not want spoilers, stop reading. In the movie, there are two tragic scenes involving a baby and a toddler. The baby drowning scene got to me a lot. For months afterwards, I had a nightmare that my son was in the water, floating towards the bottom, reaching for me, and I couldn't get to him. No matter how hard I swam, he just floated further down. I would wake up screaming. I have had night paralysis, night terrors, everything before, and I would take it all over that nightmare. Story 9. It was a nightmare I had years ago. I was walking by an elementary school that's near my house, and there were black clouds billowing from all the windows. There were a bunch of what looked like World War I-era soldiers in gas masks plastering posters to the walls of the building that had the biohazard symbol on them and quarantined written under it. Then I started to hear and feel a rumbling off in the distance. It was getting louder, stronger, closer, and it was doing it quickly. I ducked behind a car, and that's about the time I woke up. Never saw what was responsible for the rumbling. I just got the sense from the dream that I knew that by the time you heard it, whatever it was, it was already too late. Story 10. So this was a recurring dream when I was like eight years old. I was at school at dismissal time and they were loading up the buses. When I got on my bus, I was attacked by some kind of octopus thing she on the floor of the bus. I stomped it to death and ran off the bus, bumped into a friend, a babysitter, and ended up walking home with her. When I get home, all of the doors are locked except for the basement bulkhead doors. I figure it's weird for my mom to not be home when I get home from school, but that's the only way in. I open the bulkhead doors and walk part way down the stairs when I see some kind of lady monster demon thing with a giant head and rows of sharp teeth, and she's eating my little brother. I'm a protective older brother. I immediately flip into rage mode and grab a rope that's hanging from the ceiling, apparently, and Tarzan swings down to her to avenge my brother. She snatched me right out of the air mid-swing and pinned me down. She then tells me how tasty my little brother was and how she's going to eat me too. Only she can't decide where to start. She decides to start with the lung. Then I woke up. I was born with asthma, so I think that's where the lungs thing comes from. Anyway, I had that nightmare consistently for about a year and then it stopped. Story 11. When I was very young, I had a terrifying, but in retrospect, super funny dream. It all occurred after catching snippets of the original grudge movie from underneath the blanket I was hiding up while my mother watched it. In this dream, I awoke in a Japanese-style paper house, and it was extraordinarily dim. No light shone through the thin wall, and I remember feeling very on edge. After some exploring in this house, an entity began to manifest in the corner of one of the rooms, exactly like how the grudge manifests in the movie in this grotesque tangle of black hair. Scared as hell, I turned around the corner and bolted only to come to a sudden dead end, puzzlingly. The same entrance I had just come through. Now here's where it gets... I hear the awful croakings, the grudge man, and I hear it rounding the same corner I just fled from. I'm getting ready to kiss my butt crack as I stare in horror. 
I quickly turned around, and much to my horror and surprise, it had manifested in front of me, except this time it was Michael Jackson, post vitiligo. Maybe this dream occurred around Jackson's death, which could be why he appeared in the dream. And maybe his pale skin and black hair subconsciously reminded me of the dream. Either way, I woke up crying and screaming. Story 12. Your nightmares are within your power. However, Marzen notes, it takes a lot of practice. This state, known as lucid dreaming, is in which you are aware that you are dreaming and have the ability to steer the dream. Some people are able to exert control over their dreams, although they usually wake up as soon as they become aware that they are dreaming. According to Das, the practice is especially intriguing when it comes to nightmares, and there is currently growing research on the use of this technique to aid persons with PTSD who regularly experience nightmares. The thinking is that by teaching them to control their nightmares, they can begin to work through their trauma, she explains. Story 13. There's something scarier than a nightmare. Even though they are rare in adults, parents who have night terrors typically find them more terrible than their children. First of all, there will be a screaming child who will typically have their eyes wide open. With night terrors, parents usually cannot wake their child. Marsden states, a parent can wake their child, and the child remembers the scary dream they were having and can talk about it easily, she explains, in contrast to when a child has a nightmare. When a youngster experiences a night terror, they often wake up without any memory of the incident. According to Marsden, one important distinction between night terrors and nightmares is that the former happen at various phases of the sleep cycle, which explains why you might be able to scream throughout them. Night terrors happen during stage 4, the deepest sleep period, even though REM sleep is when most dreams happen. According to Marsden, it appears that they occur when kids struggle to move from this deep sleep period to REM sleep. Story 14 I had a dream that I was sitting by the shores of a lake with a bunch of kids. Eventually, Jesus came and started preaching to us. After he did, he began to walk away, and as he did, I walked after him as I wanted to talk with him personally. I called his name a couple of times, but he ignored me. But then eventually he turned his head back at me and said, I want nothing to do with you, and continued on until he disappeared. All the trees withered and died, and I was just in a state of shock, fear, and despair. When I woke up, I was terrified. The thing that scares me the most was how realistic everything looked and felt. The exact location that was in this dream was a place I am very familiar with and dream about very often, and I have never ever had it look or feel this realistic. The emotions were as raw as possible. The experience was so awful. It hurts to remember. This dream led me to a very dark place as it only heightened the severe anxiety I was feeling before that to levels that were unimaginably terrible. I ended up having a psychotic disorder that lasted for the better part of a year, and I still am directly affected by it today. Story 15. Other than sleep paralysis, I have one dream I remember vividly. For some reason, I was sleeping in my parents' bed rather than my own. I remember walking through the house. All the lights were off, but everyone was awake and getting... It was pitch black in the house. I walked through the kitchen and down the steps by my room and went out the back door by my room. As soon as I opened it, there was a bright flash, and there were aliens standing there. Yep, the typical looking one. They grabbed me and I screamed, except I actually screamed out loud and scared the crap out of my parents. I never told them what the dream was about. I also watched Friday the 13th and was terrified to fall asleep. I would drag my mattress into my parents' bedroom and sleep on the floor. I had some super messed up and terrifying dreams as a kid. Story 16. I was in a campground at night, standing with a bear and looking at a tent that a guy was sleeping in. The bear would eat something off the picnic table in the campsite and say... When I eat this thing, he dreams about blank, and whatever the guy dreamed about would become real and fly out of the tent. The bear did this for a few items and finally said, and when I eat this one, he dreams about German world info. Then a tiny red flying saucer came out of the tent, shot me, and I flew a hundred feet or so into the forest. I started walking, and then a voiceover where I was narrating myself said, and that was the night I met the fiend. I looked at some bushes right near me and saw two large, furry, pointed gray ears sticking out of me. For whatever reason, they scared the hell out of me, and I was able to recognize it was a dream and wake myself up. Story 17. Every hour I get a new one, but one I found most repulsive was some weird black giant humanoids with multiple arms killing my parents, my cousins, and then my best friend with my hands, all of them breathing my name in the last moment. Then they proceeded to abuse the dead bodies and me. It felt terribly real. Warm blood in my hands and arms. Only people who are my family ending in such a manner. My parents shedding tears but smiling at me as they fell while I had my hands in their punctured lungs. 
my cousins caressing my head or shoulder and dying saying they love me as I had their ribs crackling under my hands. My best friend gives me a bloodied and warm hug and kiss before saying that she loves me and crying as she falls while I am crushing her heart with my hand. The abuse part was so real that I felt pain all over my body and bottom for minutes after waking. Phantom pain sort of stuff, but I have grown terrifyingly afraid and defensive over them. But uh, I love them more than anything. <laughs> Story 18 I had one dream where I had regenerative abilities, but not at the pace of Wolverine. It's like getting a broken hand and it heals within two days. So in this dream, I am constantly being hunted and injured. The worst part is it all felt very real. I can feel them catching me, ripping my limbs slowly, slowly pulling all my organs out, even seeing my own family trying to kill me. It was terrible. The dream felt like it lasted forever. I even convinced myself this is reality. It's not a dream. The final part of the dream is the worst. Every part of my body was gone, missing, and others were chasing me. I even died and somehow came back to life because of my ability. Then I woke up to my entire body feeling sore. Story 19. I don't dream or remember them often, but when I do, it's quite the experience because they are always something straight out of a Moritz Cornelis Esther painting. The fabric of reality and the laws of physics are merely suggestions and things usually become uh, fractal. Uh, think of the black hole scene in Interstellar. So anyway, one night I'm tripping through the usual kaleidoscope of a dream when something startles me awake. I lay in bed trying to piece together what madness I've just witnessed, but something feels off. I wake up again. However, this time I can't move. Having experienced sleep paralysis before, I know it will pass, and eventually it does. I breathe a sigh of knowing it's over, and eagerly get out of bed just to wake up back in bed again. This time I'm really trapped in my own head. I've now gone from sleep paralysis to something like locked-in syndrome. I can't even connect to my body to feel if it's paralyzed. My awareness is far under the surface, like I existed only in a void. I panic. Suddenly, I become extremely aware that I need to wake up at all costs. With all my will, I start to aggressively force myself to wake up through what I can only describe as endless layers of consciousness. Repeatedly, waking up over and over, panicked. I have no idea how many times I woke or how long it took, but eventually I'm conscious. The next three, four days were awful. I couldn't trust anything because I couldn't convince myself whether or not I was awake. Zero out of ten would not be recommended. Sometimes I wonder if I actually did. Other times I wonder how I could experience it. Story 20. I often have apocalyptic dreams, but this one was like a bloody novel. I once had one where I was in this horrendous fantasy slash demonic-like setup where people were born with natural powers of flight or super strength or other sorts of power. The dictator that was enslaving everyone was keeping us all in a sort of war camp where they tortured and experimented on us until we became these sort of super weapons. I remember going through the whole process of planning an elaborate escape which progressed to an all-out war. I fully remember the pain of having to leave loved ones behind, knowing they were being tortured. I've never woken up feeling more exhausted from a dream. Story 21. I'd gone to bed super early, 7 p.m., and woke up at 1 a.m. Obviously, there was nothing else I could do except try and go back to sleep. I closed my eyes, but I don't remember falling asleep. My sister opened my door holding an object in one hand and her dog in the other. I asked her what she was doing here, and she told me she had opened one of her presents and wanted to show me what she got. She started to get into my bed against my protests. It was really distressing for some reason. Then I woke up or I thought I did. I reached over for my phone on my bed to check the time. I don't remember what it was, but I remember my battery was low. So I turned over to grab my charger on the other side. I plugged it in and dropped my phone, charger wire sitting across my neck. Suddenly it started to tighten and drag me off the bed. I could feel myself losing air and coming off the bed. Then I actually woke up. I also once had a dream that I got in a car crash with someone I knew. I pretended to shoot myself to signal my great distress in the situation. My friend did not like that and wanted to show me what it's like to be shot. She had this weird gun that shot and would hit like a real bullet but wouldn't actually kill you. She grabbed me and shoved the gun into my stomach and shot me. The worst part was that I could feel it. I felt it in my sleep so vividly. It hurt. It felt like a sharp pain mixed with burning and aching and like I had been hit with a cannonball in the gut. It hurt so much, I could still remember what it felt like when I woke up. Story 22 I've had somewhat of a rough life. In my lowest of times, I've had recurring dreams of tornadoes. Always multiple tornadoes. The more stress, the more tornadoes. 
these dreams went off and on for about 15, 20 years. When my life got more stable, I stopped having them for about 10 years. Then my brother got sick. I was living with him in hospice and had this nightmare. I was standing at a four corner stop with a big farmhouse in front of Vinan and just to the right of me, it was all flatlands, uh, farms, I guess. Off in the far distance was the biggest blackest tornado and it was headed right towards us. I held his hand a lot more after that. Been three years and haven't had that dream since.